Hi Hope Kids! Welcome to today's sermon message. Today I have a basket here with me and it can contain many different things. What things have you seen in a basket? Um, this one is for my laundry. So when I have dirty clothes or when I wash my clothes, I put it in the basket. Today's story has something to do with a basket. So last week, we learned um, in God's word in the Bible about Saul. Saul was a Pharisee who at first was persecuting Christians. But when on his way to Damascus, a bright light appeared, blinding him. And it was Jesus who was speaking, saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? See, Saul didn't know that when he was persecuting Christians, he was actually hurting Jesus. But luckily, he turned his ways around and he began to follow Jesus. And also thanks to Ananias following God's directions, um, Ananias went and prayed for Saul, even risking his life. And when he, Ananias prayed for Saul, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. So now we're at, a, at the story where Saul is now in Damascus. And he began to preach about Jesus in the synagogue. The Jewish people would go there to worship and learn about God in the synagogue. And God, um, Saul wanted, would say to them, Jesus is the son of God. Even though the Jewish people believed in God, most of them did not believe in Jesus, that Jesus is the son of God. Um, the change in Saul was so great that when people heard him preach, they were amazed. Saul was the one who used to persecute people who believed in Jesus, but now he's saying Jesus is the son of God and he believes in him. The people must have been very confused and kind of scared or they might have think that Saul, is he pretending? Is he trying to trick us right now? Um, in the Bible, it says, isn't that the man who caused so many havoc and problems in Jerusalem? So they were saying, has he come now to Damascus to take us prisoners? It's true that Saul had gone to Damascus in the beginning to arrest Jesus' followers, but now he changed his way around and he was preaching about the good news of Jesus. He wanted Saul to become a follower of Jesus and tell others about him. And that's exactly what happened. When God saved him, Saul turned away from his sinful life and began preaching about the good news and the Son of God. Now, Saul had spent several years in a place called Arabia, learning more and more about Jesus and growing a strong in God's strength and his faith. God was helping Saul to know him more and to love him. God was preparing Saul to have the strength he would need for hard times that were going to come. Now, at the same time, um, the Bible says that Saul grew and grew stronger and God gave him that bold strength. And Saul returned to Damascus the day after day, after day and continued to preach about Jesus, um, showing from the Old Testament that Jesus is the Savior who had been promised hundreds of years before, that God had kept his promise. The Jewish leaders became angrier and angrier. They hated what Saul was saying because they didn't believe that, God, that Jesus was God's son. The leaders didn't like what Saul had to say, um, preaching about the truth. So they came up with a plan. They did not want to admit that they were also sinners um, who needed to be saved. So Saul had been a religious leader like them, but now you know he changed his ways around and he's following Jesus. So the Jewish leaders plotted to have Saul killed so that he can't preach about Jesus anymore. They watched the gates to, um, of the city day and night. So if Saul tried to leave, they could capture and kill him. So Saul and his friends found out about this plan. What could they do to help him? You see, at the time, um, many of the cities had huge walls surrounding the city for protection. Um, here's a, sh a photo of the city gates at Damascus and it still stands today and you could see that the walls were really high so the only way to go in and out of the city was through the city gates the bible tells us what saul did in acts chapter 9 verse 25 but his followers took him by night and lowered him in a basket through an opening in the wall his friends were so clever 
they used a basket, probably bigger than this, to fit Saul, and they lowered him slowly over the wall in the basket. Saul was no longer the one looking for followers of Jesus, wanting to kill them, but now the Jewish leaders were looking for Saul and wanting to kill him and persecute him because Saul was going around and sharing boldly about God and the good news. You know, that's not easy. God, but in those times, you have to remember that God gives you the strength and his strength gives you the boldness through him. You know, it would have been easier for Saul to kind of keep the truth to himself, but he couldn't, but he couldn't. Jesus had saved him and Saul wanted everyone to know about how amazing Jesus is and how he can turn your life around for the better. When Saul came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the other followers of Jesus there, but they were afraid of him. Why do you think they were afraid? They didn't believe he had become followers of Jesus. So some people were still questioning Saul. But Barnabas, one of those believers, brought Saul to the other believers. He told them the whole story of what happened to Saul. Barnabas had to explain that Saul no longer persecuted the church or the followers of Jesus, but now he was one himself. Jesus had appeared to Saul. Now Saul was even preaching about the Lord, and because Barnabas spoke up for Saul, the other disciples and believers in Jerusalem accepted Saul as one of God's family, the church. So much has changed in Saul's life. From this point on in the Bible, Saul was now called the Apostle Paul. So Paul, when you, you know, we heard of Paul all often, that was actually Saul's new name. Once he it symbolizes that his life had changed and he's living this new life following after Jesus. And also it was changed by God's Holy Spirit. And now he boldly um, was preaching with God's strength. So think about a time when you wanted to tell someone about Jesus, but you were scared to get made fun of, or you might have been scared of rejection, meaning someone said, no, thank you. I don't want to hear it. You see, even adults, we have the fear of rejection, but that shouldn't stop us from wanting to tell others about Jesus. You know, we should boldly speak the truth. And, you know, even if other people disagree with us because they practice other religion, or if they don't believe in any gods or even the one true God, don't let that stop you from still talking about Jesus. Because, you know, knowing Jesus is such a great thing in our lives that we should and want to tell as many people as we can about Jesus. Because when you have that Holy Spirit and God in your life, it just makes your life so much better. And don't keep that, you know, that goodness just to yourself. Tell your friends, tell your cousins, your relatives, um, and anybody that you come to uh, encounter with. So just like Paul being brave and bold for God and not by his own strength, remember, he had the Holy Spirit giving him the strength. Um, we can do the same. Now, um, just like in Damascus, people in Jerusalem now also wanted to kill him. So even though many people hated Paul, even more people came to listen to the truth um, that he was saying about Jesus. So it was kind of like 50-50. As more people didn't want to hear what Paul had to say, there were just as many people who agreed with what Paul was saying. Um, More and more people believed in Jesus because of what God had done through Paul's life. So when you are afraid or nervous, you know, think about if I didn't make the choice right now, if I didn't obey God right now, how many people wouldn't know about Jesus? Or if I'm bold right now and God gives me the strength to go and tell people about Jesus, imagine how many people can come to know about God and about Jesus. You know, it's called the ripple effect. When you one person does something, you know, it could go far and out to you to who knows how many. So think about that this week as you remember that God is strong. Now, in conclusion, Paul was made completely new because of Jesus and God's family of believers accepted Paul as a believer and f- welcomed him into the church in Jerusalem. The church kept growing bigger and bigger with more and more people. And the Bible says the believers were comforted by the Holy Spirit who gave them the strength and helped them to be bold for God.